Hello everyone. In this session, I am going to discuss about the dural folds. In the cranial cavity, the dura mater consists of two layers that is, outer endosteal layer and inner meningeal layer. So, in the dura mater, in the cranial cavity, it consists of two layers outer endosteal layer, inner meningeal layer. So this outer endosteal layer lines the inner surface of the skull on forming the endocranium. What about this meningeal layers? This, this meningeal layers it forming a numerous folds and this folds divide the cranial cavity into different compartments which lodges the different parts of the brain. So this inner meningeal layer gives rise to four folds of dura mater. What are the four folds? Fox cerebri, tentorium cerebelli, Fox cerebelli, and diaphragma cella. So, these are the four dural folds will be seen in the cranial cavity. First, we will see the Fox cerebri. So, what is the shape of the fox cerebri? It is a sickle shape. It is a sickle shape. So, if you, are, if you see the shape of the fox cerebri, it will be like this. It's a somewhat sickle shape. So, if you see, this is a two cerebral hemisphere now. Now you can see this is a two cerebral hemisphere and you can see in the middle we can see there is a medial longitudinal fissure. So this fox cerebral bat is lodges, it is lodges in the median longitudinal fissures. Median longitudinal fissure. So this fox cerebral consists of two ends. What are the two ends? We are having anterior end and this is the posterior end. And we have a two border and this is the upper border and lower border. And when you see this is the two cerebral hemisphere, the fox cerebral will be present like this. So it consists of two surfaces that is right and left surfaces. We are having two surfaces, right and left surfaces. I already mentioned the anterior end. So the anterior end of the fox cerebri is narrow and it is attached to the crista galli. The anterior end is attached to the crista galli. If you see, this is the cranial cavity now. So imagine this is the middle cranial fossa. In the anterior cranial fossa, you can see one bony projection. This projection is called as crista galli. So the anterior end is where it is attached, it is attached to the crista galli. Where the posterior end is attached. So this posterior end is broad and it is attached to the upper surface of tentorium cerebral line. Upper surface of tentorium cerebral line. Imagine now this is the fox cerebral, it will be like this. So here the roof of the posterior canal fossa is formed by tentorium cerebelli. So what happened? This fox cerebelli, the anterior end is attached to the crista galli and the posterior end is attached to the upper surface of the tentorium cerebelli. And you can see the two borders. So this is the upper border. So this upper border is convex. It is attached to the lips of sagittal sulcus. Lips of sagittal sulcus. So the upper border is convex and where it is attached, it is attached to the lips of sagittal sulcus and the lower border is concave and this rests on the upper surface of corpus callosum. The lower border is concave and where it is rest, it is rest on the upper surface of the corpus callosum. And the two surfaces, this is the right and left surfaces is related to the medial surface of medial surface of cerebral hemisphere and what are the venous sinuses what are the venous sinuses related to the fox cerebrae 
Along the upper border, they can see the superior sagittal sinus. Superior sagittal sinus. Along the lower border, we can see inferior sagittal sinus. Along the attached margin, we can see a straight sinuses. So we have three sinuses will be related to the Fox cerebri. Number one will be the superior sagittal sinus, inferior sagittal sinus and straight sinuses. So this are the sinuses related to the Fox cerebri. And next we will move on to tentorium cerebelli. Tentorium cerebelli. This tentorium cerebelli, it is a tent shaped. So it's going to form the roof for the posterior cranial fossa. So it's going to form the roof for the posterior cranial fossa. So imagine this is the posterior cranial fossa below. So this tentorium cerebelli form roof for the posterior cranial fossa. So this tentorium cerebelli is going to separate the occipital lobe of cerebrum to cerebellum. So this is the act as a demarcation above the tentorium cerebellum we can see the part of cerebrum and below the tentorium cerebellum we can see the cerebellum. So the tentorium cerebellum is going to form a roof for the posterior cranial fossa. It is roof for the posterior cranial fossa and divides the it is going to divide the occipital lobe of cerebrum to the cerebellum. So, if you see the tentorium cerebellum, it consists of two margin. What are the two margin? We are having free margin and attached margin. What is the shape of the free margin? This free margin is somewhat U shape. Imagine now, this is the cranial fossa. And you can see this is the middle cranial fossa and this is the anterior clinoid processes. Anterior clinoid processes. The ends of free margin is attached to the anterior clinoid process. So the ends of this is the free margin of tentorium cerebelli is attached to the anterior clinoid process. So this margin bounds on forming a notch. The notch is called as tentorial notch. This tentorial notch lodges midbrain. This tentorial notch lodges midbrain. And next we'll go for attached margin. So this attached margin anterolaterally it is attached to the superior border of petrous part of temporal bone anterolaterally it is attached to the superior border of petrous part of temporal bone posterolaterally it is attached to the lips of transverse sulcus posterolaterally it is attached to the lips of transverse sulcus So, attached margin, anterolaterally it is attached to the superior border of petrous part of temporal bone and posterolaterally it is attached to the lips of transverse sulcus. Okay, what are the sinuses related to the attached margin? So, you can see superior petrocell sinuses, superior petrocell sinuses, transverse sinuses, transverse sinuses and on the upper surface we can see the straight sinuses. So we can see the three sinuses related to the tentorium cerebelli. We can see the triangular area just where the attached margin the free margin crossing each other we can see the triangular area this triangular area is called as oclomotor triangle. This oclomotor triangle is pierced by third cranial nerve. You can see here, this is the pierced by third cranial nerve. And next we'll go for the 
fox cerebelli the fox cerebelli it is a small sickle shaped dura meter the fox cerebelli is a small sickle shaped dura meter fox cerebelli it is a small sickle shaped dura meter imagine this is a tentorium cerebelli above the tentorium cerebelli the fox cerebelli will be present and below the tentorium cerebelli fox cerebelli is present is a small sickle shaped and this this fox cerebelli it's projecting forwards towards the posterior cerebellar notch it projecting forwards towards the posterior cerebellar notch it consists of two margin anterior concave margin it's free and posterior convex margin is attached to the internal occipital crest so if you see this is the cranial fossa now this is the middle cranial fossa and the posterior cranial fossa you can see one important foramen that foramen is called as foramen magnum here one in the occipital bone in the inner aspect of the occipital bones you can see one protuberant that is called as internal occipital protuberance so the fox cerebelli is extends from internal occipital protuberance to the posterior margin of the foramen magnum so the posterior convex margin is attached to the internal occipital crest and they related to one important sinuses that is the occipital sinuses occipital sinuses and next we'll go for the diaphragma cella so diaphragma cella it is a horizontal fold of dura meter it is the horizontal fold of dura meter next will be the diaphragma cella it is the horizontal fold of dura meter it extends from tuberculum cella to dorsum cella so if you see this is a middle cranial fossa so in the middle cranial fossa this is a body of sphenoid bone in the body in the center we can see the aperture this is called as hypophyseal fossa so this diaphragma cella it is a horizontal fold of dura meter so here we can see the tuberculum cella and here we can see the dorsum cella so it extends from tuberculum cella to the dorsum cella and in this diaphragma cella in center there is a opening or you can say aperture for the passage of stalk of pituitary gland so this is about the diaphragma cella so this meningeal layer what happens it divides the cranial cavity into different compartments by means of four folds one of the four folds they are having a fox cerebelli tentorium cerebelli fox cerebelli and diaphragma cella so this is about the dural folds thank you